Dungeon Runners Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Runners Podcast. I am Mr. Creepbuster with Spike. That's General Drowned. I'm General Drowned, and today we and, have a uh, special guest. Oh, I'm special. Oh. Oh, you're Matt. Yeah, yeah. we got Matt. Uh, chip, chip, Cheerio, yogurt, um, <laughs> cheese <Yogurt>. toasty. <laughs> the yogurt. <laughs> Yogurt's the worst uh, one. Aluminium. Okay, aluminium's think- probably, probably worse. I think that's what British people do, right? Yeah, they pass yeah, things wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They call they call flashlight torches, you know. Yeah, that's weird. Right? Yeah. What's, what's up with that? What's with what's with color with the U? Hey, that's Jesus. why. Now nah, it's wrong. You're, I think Hold gray up. is also different too. Right? Everyone, everyone this is my hat is blue. <laughs> oh right, yes. blue. In case anybody has not uh, has has not seen you before, but you'll probably end up seeing blue a lot or a lot around here. I'm guessing whenever uh, one of us is missing, blue is probably going to show up or just show up for fun every once in a while. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I got one in like an hour ago. I needed to be here. Yeah. Great. We got well, back. Welcome aboard. Yeah. So, okay, we're gonna we're gonna start. Let's get started. Go into it. Because I pulled out a um. I know normally we have a list of of hypothetical questions we've been using for the past couple episodes. Yes. And if anybody uh, would like to send us any, please feel free to leave a comment with your uh, with your hypothetical question you'd like us to discuss. But I actually looked up a brand new one, so it's not one that <laughs> either of you guys would have seen on the list <gasps> so far. There's nothing Trade you guys could have been prepared for. Yes, I've I'm doing this to make sure that nobody has notes over what the uh what the the hypotheticals oh you mean (laughs) what only matt did yes that was bullshit last week nobody knows this last week matt took notes yeah matt about things he wanted what he wanted to answer with he took notes and still came out with that garbage answer yes wow look they weren't good notes apparently not okay so, uh, you guys, I assume both of you guys have seen Back to the Future uh, Part 2, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, Back but to the future. ages. Okay, so for you, Jen, for anybody who's listening, um, in part two, Marty McFly goes to the future and he ends up stealing a um, he ends up stealing a, a book of sports uh, sports history facts um, that he brings back with him because he plans on placing bets. Of course, he ends up losing it, I think, and then losing it to Biff, and it go, creates the whole plot of the movie. Mm-hmm. But um, the question is, if you could travel a hundred years into the future and steal one thing to make your life better, what would it be? Assuming that it's not going to be a sports almanac. Yeah. <laughs> I think day-to-day life would be made better with, like, a computer in the future. Oh, yeah, probably. Oh, but, but no, nothing would be... Nothing would work on it. Yeah, nothing would be compatible for it. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Um... <laughs> You can't really take a car because then, then people get suspicious. Uh, yeah. Well, I suppose okay. you could you could take it. Even then, like when you bring it back here, everybody's gonna be confused as shit. Like why, how, things like that. You'd be arrested on the spot. Okay, but um, well, oh, that actually reminds me. Did you hear that? Like this is a while ago, but like they kind of banned. I think it was England. They banned some dude from using his hover car that he made. It wasn't like street legal, but it you know worked. <laughs> oh. he made a hover car? Yeah. I like, did not hear about that. It's or, pretty good. Yeah, like. It's it's fucking nuts. It's, it's, if you can create something and it works, but you can't use it because it's not registered as a vehicle, though so it's just like, mm, what's the point? It's the point of doing things. I, I don't. If it was me, I would just be like, see you later, fuckers, and take off straight up in the air. Like, catch me <laughs> if you can. <laughs> Also, I think we need to, like, dictate what sort of future this is, because there's, like, yeah. a lot of variation between that. Is it a, is I, it a I good future? Uh, I was going to say, it would be it would be in the, the Back to the Future realm of uh, of future, so it's it would be, like, um, you know, that the whole idea of hover cars uh, with, tele, like, uh, robots and, like, the, the world, the way that the 1950s used to be able to see the future, you know what I'm saying? It was, like, the world of tomorrow with hover cars, otherwise the world is pretty much, pretty much similar but always made better by like robots and and um view screens and um video games that you wear on your head shit like that okay if we're doing like hypotheticals here why not just take like the cure to cancer or something and sell it and be rich because how would you recreate it i don't know you take the plants then there's like knowledge on that stuff i don't know you didn't say how you get hung up on being in the future you said what you took yeah i guess that's fair that's fair okay that's fair do you take a a renewable use (laughs) i take whatever whatever, whatever, yeah whatever we uh we're using as energy in the future just take that just take the uh oh 
Okay. Get one of those fancy Pepsis. Okay, hang on. Let's just go ahead and get the whole like ambiguity of the future out then. Let's just say you could go over to like a sci-fi scenario we always we already know is is uh is established. So let's say like I don't want to say Star Wars. Let's Blade say Runner. Blade Runner. Yeah, sure. If you went to the future of Blade Runner and you could take one thing to make your life better now, what would it be? That would be a whole lot better if I've seen Blade Runner. <laughs> <laughs> You know the the umbrella at least, right? Yeah, I do. I mean, that's I, I know I know Blade Runner technically. I I did a paper on Blade Runner. I just never watched it. Did you do How the paper? Is- All right. Did you do a paper on Blade Runner? Or did you do a paper on the book? Uh, do robots drink or dream of mechanical sheep? Electric sheep. No, Electric- I did a I did a paper on Blade Runner where I just watched a YouTube video that summed up Blade Runner in the middle. Oh my <laughs> I god! Wrote the paper on it. <laughs> it's freaking lazy. I think we Look, learned okay. more about your terrible life choices than <laughs> answers to this hypothetical question. <laughs> Look, okay, I didn't want to watch Blade Runner at the time. I was a busy college student. <laughs> see, see, you would know about the future if you've watched Blade Runner. <laughs> yeah. Also, okay, in that situation, fill me in. What, would, what would you actually get bring back from Blade Runner then? Because both of you have seen it. I, I, just want, I, I don't think I could be smarter. I just want, like, a hologram. <laughs> Like projector, those things are so cool. cool. Yeah, I'm saying like hologram projector actually could make your life a whole lot cooler on Earth. Yeah. Like, I'm assuming that they were they were like uh, I mean like it, it would be like something you could actually project like a, another person. You could just fuck with people all day. Yeah, yeah. right. Do the fucking what is it the the Star War thing with the the princess girl with the, in the trash can? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that was the worst explanation <laughs> of the beginning of Star Wars <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> the problem is you knew exactly what he was talking. <laughs> I know that's that's what's terrible. <laughs> oh. oh, that's great. <laughs> the princess girl in the trash. <laughs> uh, for anybody who doesn't know, I've never watched Star Wars, and I don't plan I to. S- okay, so what, what's stupid though is like me and Jen went over to Disneyland together, and he rode the Star Wars ride, and he was like, "That was really cool." <laughs> like, yeah, we should watch Star Wars together. Okay, I guess ten minutes once a year is fine. <laughs> 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 yeah, good enough. Oh my god, it's just fucking awful. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, almost half the Star Wars movies are terrible, so... Okay, mm-hmm. like, but like that, that, that's because the prequels just make up half of it. Mm-hmm. I'd say, isn't like but, most of this stuff like non-canon or something? No, that's no, no. That's the no, ex- that... de- extended universe, right? Yeah. Or expanded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, apparently the thing was that the, the reason why all that became non-canon is because they're just going to remake it over again. Really? Yeah. It was sort of a limited factor because they couldn't tell their own stories with all this mm-hmm. lore they had to deal with. Lore? That was, but I mean, like, there's all the things that they've also done. So, like, Star Wars Clone Wars is ca- is canonical still. And uh, Star Wars, uh, what is it, the Rebels, the show mm-hmm. that's currently on the air, is technically canonical as well uh that was why they that's how you know that like uh clone wars was canonical was because rebels is canonical and it connects characters from one to the other is that the one with the cool robot guy with the forearms he's in the prequels yeah oh. i mean he was in star wars clone wars but he was yeah. more just a, a like the, the problem with the prequels amongst many problems <laughs> but um there's a couple of things that it does it's just weird and that's where you're like okay cool i am aware of this enemy that you are currently fighting and then in the next episode the next movie Movie, it's here's a new guy who's worse and like I don't know where he came from and why everybody seems to hate him so much but like uh, like okay this is the new enemy and then in the next movie here's a new enemy that's worse and we've been oh. fighting him the whole time it's like you're forgetting the part where the old enemy died in like 10 seconds oh that's right that did happen in the very in the third movie too yes that was stupid the fuck are you well, talking about I was thinking more how okay so Count Dooku I mean I'm aware you don't know what, what we're talking yeah. about though Jen but like Count Dooku is just a character they just made up in the second movie he just all of a sudden he's the big bad guy we they had no mention of him in the first no mention of him like like at all no hinting towards he's the big bad guy but in the second movie he's the big bad guy that's who they were trying to kill is he and the- he gets away is he the do it guy uh, no, 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 no. That's that's, that's Senator Emperor. Palpatine. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, he's like the the big bad guy that they're trying to kill. So like you're thinking like, okay, that's big. He built him up. He's gonna be like the big final battle in the third movie. No, <laughs> within the first 15 minutes of it, he's just beheaded. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then they give you new bad guys. What was the point of Count Dooku? Theory. <laughs> theory is that originally the idea was there was going to be a large overarching bad guy that grows out of Jar Jar Binks. 
Oh my god, oh, right. into that. I, I heard yeah. about this theory at least. But they hated him, but the audience hated him so much that they just canned the whole idea and they made up something else to, to take its place in the second film. What? I should have just doubled down on Jar Jar Binks then. I would have, honestly, I would have been totally down for that. I, I kind of love the idea that like this really stupid ass character just comes back and he's actually been manipulating everyone and playing us all for fools, including the audience. So mm -hmm. this was something like I heard on a uh, another podcast. Don't watch other podcasts, only watch this one. But like there is a comic out there of the Star Wars thing where um, Jar Jar Binks' father is like, Contemplating committing suicide, and his friend tells him, "No, think of your family, think of your son." And then he's like, "Oh God, my son!" And he shoots himself in the face. <laughs> oh, I've seen, I've seen that, that <laughs> I've seen that comic. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like <laughs> Jesus. Jar Jar Binks is so bad that he just shoot, his own father shoots himself in the face rather than go home to him. Here's the thing, though. Like, uh, I'll, I'll go over to this, and I like, I don't want to get into Star Wars for forever, but um, if you, I, mean, I think Blue, you've seen Star Wars Clone Wars, right? Because I think you and me have talked about it a bit. Before. I've seen some of it, like. I'm putting that onto our two watch list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not watching that. There's no, a lot Star Wars, of it, isn't there? I think it's five seasons, four seasons, yeah. and then the fifth season's like bonus episodes kind of thing. But um, it's very, very good, uh, especially after the the first season. The first season very much is like, what audience should we have? Should it be children? And then like uh, after that, it realized like, no, I'm pretty sure like Star Wars fans will like it as long as we're telling Star Wars story, which it basically is. Um, mm hmm. But it, it has these really good stories, um, some of them featuring Jar Jar Binks. Oh, Jesus. And, uh, no, that sounds like super kind of like, oh, I'd never want to watch that episode. But it's actually like a super dramatic story with Jar Jar Binks. Jeez. It's, act it's told really well. And it's usually like, here's a whole bunch of characters that have very serious scenarios. And they all just so happen to know Jar Jar Binks and they're following him through this story. So he's bumbling his way through it, but the rest of the um, uh, the rest of the cast kind of are still pulling him in his idiocy into um, into these very serious scenarios and he has to become serious for at least minutes at a time uh, to deal with it. Which is actually, it legitimately is, makes it very good. So the, the thing about um, Jar Jar, um, like, why does he talk like that? Because it from what I've seen from the comic, which is very little, uh, it looks like everybody just talks normal, but Jar Jar talks like Misa and Socha or whatever. It's, um, okay, I know I'm kind of showing off my nerd power level here, but the, mm. uh, it's actually a certain sign, I think they had said. Of every, all of the Gungans speak somewhat strangely, but, um, like certain signs in the hierarchy, you, the more strange you actually kind of speak with that dialect, the higher up you technically are in the hierarchy. But he has kind of said that it, he was outcast in the very beginning. He was he was thrown away for being, quote, clumsy. Uh, and none of the other Gungans actually mention why they threw him out, just Wait. that he was welcomed back in for being a hero. His race so. is called a Gungan? Yes. Yes. I thought it was just Jar Jar. No. <laughs> so wait why would they call him of his own race why that's so why is, terrible why does pikachu <laughs> say pikachu you tell me because he's a brainless animal yeah. and wow so why are you asking questions so like all right so that simpsons joke where like um jar jar binks is like speaking to a council or something it's like is that a legit thing no, it, it's there's nothing wrong with the way these talks technically. Like the others, the other Gungans of, of hierarchy of that like higher point, they also speak really weird. Mm -hmm. They they have like their own like whatever Gungan accent dialect or whatever you want to call it. But why? Because people speak different languages, Jen. <laughs> you also have to remember this is a universe where a type of music exists that's called jizz. <laughs> is that really? <laughs> yes. I didn't know that. The the music played in the cantina is called jizz music. <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> that, mm. Look it up, man. It's legit. I'm Googling it right now. Hang on. Jizz music? <laughs> I don't, I'm going to tell you. You're probably not going to get what you want. Oh, first thing that comes up is from Wikipedia. Jizz. <laughs> it's an upbeat swing genre of music, most notably performed by the Fing Da and the, the Modal Nodes. I'm pretty sure I butchered that. Wait, <laughs> other wait. notable jizz bands include other things from Star Wars. I was say, the, so they named every weird instrument that, that, that can't exist? No, that's just like the type of music. It's like jazz. No, actually, actually, Blue, they did. Oh. Notable jizz instruments. <laughs> The bass veal, the band fill, the clap e box. What? The jizz and the jizz box are notable instruments as well. <laughs> jizz box. <laughs> wow. Star Wars is dumb. 
Look, 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 here, look here, okay? The Jizz Whaler was a totally legitimate character and a respected musician. <laughs> Jizz Whaler? <laughs> <laughs> it has any, anything to do with whales? No, okay. Apparently in the novelization of Return of the Jedi, the term Jizz Whaler is used to describe the musician. But in the term Jizz, the name of the musician's style is not introduced until the publication of Tales from Mos Eisley Cantina 12 years later. In 2007, it was correctly changed to Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, correctly. That is I'm, not I want to I want to go ahead and make note that we are recognizing that anybody who is about to write down the angry comment that it isn't called Jizz and Star Wars needs to be respected. Hey, commenter. It used I to be called Jizz and that's how it's be. <laughs> oh gee, <Is> motherfuckers. <laughs> Respect Jen, the original content. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, what have you been up to this week? Uh, a lot of working. Besides watching Star Wars. No. <laughs> uh, a lot of working and uh, like a lot of us, I'm, I think you were there, Spike. Um, a lot of us went and rewatched uh, My Hero Academy or My Hero Academia. Yeah, I, I was there for a bit of that, actually. I've never seen the show before and I was kind of in and out. But um, the show is super interesting. Like, well, I think we were watching the dub for that one too, right? Yeah, because yep. we were like, because Matt started on it on the dub, so he, he wanted to continue with it. And mm -hmm. the dub's pretty good. Uh, it, I do have, I have some problems. Like, uh, the frog girl, uh, Su uh, they named her Sue, I guess. Um, I think it's pronounced like Tasuya, Asu, or something like that in um, like the original. But uh, mm -hmm. they call her Sue in the book. Her voice is the only one like I have a big, the biggest problem with. Because like she sounds so much cuter in Japanese. She sounds yeah. more. She f in the English, she sounds like she has a croak, like a uh, like you know how people have like a sore throat. Yeah, that's what she kind of yeah. sounds like in English. But in Japanese, it sounds more like she's kind of mimicking a frog dialect. You know, really. Definitely. And fucking All Might is perfect. All Might is the perfect uh, American voice actor for it. Yeah, I couldn't. That's basically exactly what I picture. There's like nothing better for him. It's uh, ah, god, it's a good show. The principal is also pretty perfect. Oh yeah, the principal's great. I love him. He's a little mouse bear dog thing. Mm -hmm. It is explained later in the manga, but I don't actually want to say it. Mm -hmm. But uh, Fair enough. Uh, right now, season two is coming out, so we got Creeps, Matt, and almost Spike caught up. Oh. Almost, yeah. I'm. Uh, I, I know you guys were an episode ahead of me when I ended up dropping out for the night, but I. Uh... Not sure if you guys kept kept going. Yeah, we finished. No, we, yeah, we finished the first season, but did not go past that. Yeah, it was. I really, I want to watch some more. Yeah, I want to actually like sit down and watch the whole thing too, because I'm I, since I was kind of like drifting in and out trying to get other stuff done. It was like, <laughs> I should absolutely give it a watch when you have a chance. But other than that, like just work. I work like in ten hours a day, so there's that, and then I go to sleep. Jesus, man. How's uh, how's work going? Because I know uh, I think with last episode we talked about you started work. Yeah. yeah. Um. Since then I worked on like six different new machines. Um. A lot of them are easy. The only thing that the only thing that I don't like about this job, and it's just one part of the job, one specific job in that job, is something called deburring, which is I'm taking strips of metal like for the for the the front of the braces, and then I'm rubbing them against the rock to get rid of <gasps> excess metal. And uh, I geez. cut myself so much just doing that. And Monday, this Monday, that's all I did for 10 hours. Oh, dude. They didn't give you, like, gloves? They do, but they cut straight through them because there's thin slices of metal. Ugh. Oh, that sounds so painful, actually. <laughs> yeah, it fucking sucks. It's just boxes and boxes of that. Because the first thing I had to do was, like, I had to finish someone else's work order. And I did that mm -hmm. in, like, seconds. It's like, okay, all these other machines are easy. I can take care of them. Like, it, they'll fill up my time. I don't have to do anything else. But then once I finished that... It was the rest, the rest of the day was just grabbing the piece of metal, rubbing it against this rock, putting it away, grabbing this metal, rubbing it against the rock, put it away, cut yourself, put it away. Uh, just, uh, uh. So you're, so what you're saying is you're in a job where they, they can add blood to something and it's fine. Yeah. yeah. I mean. I love how both of you just said that at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it's nothing, nothing to really brag home about, but uh, what about you, Spike? What do you mean nothing? Uh, me? I've been, I've been trying to buy a house. <laughs> what? I've been trying to buy a house. This is um, yeah, the the whole idea is like uh, me me and Megan is my wife. Uh, we we've been wanting to move into a house of our own for the actually for like the past year and a half. But we just haven't had the preparation for it yet. 
and uh, now it's kind of like now's the time. Like, let's go ahead and get stuff going. So we were looking in another city a little bit further away. And this past weekend, we just went up there to try to find a house. We we actually got a hold of one and put in an offer for it. It got accepted. And like this place is like dream kind of house. And it's over our budget that we wanted to pay. Yeah. Uh, but it was like this dream house. Yeah, like it has like this perfect view of like a lake in the backyard and all this stuff. Like it's but it's, it's just like slightly over what we wanted and more than we plan on spending. Uh, but my folks was there with us. My dad used to sell houses uh, when he was younger. He worked. He was in real estate. And um, so I wanted my dad to be there. They were there. They saw it and they kind of saw like when we left, it was like, OK, let's try making a decision on some of the other houses we actually could afford. Uh, but they actually offered, like, when we went over to dinner at that night, uh, they had offered to go ahead and cover the difference that we, we didn't have uh, so we could be able to get the house that we really loved, that we really, really loved. So it was, like, really awesome on my dad, my dad, my mom's part for to being able to offer to do that for us. Fuck yeah. So, dude. yeah, they, they, we put in the offer. We weren't expecting them to take it because the mar- market's terrible. Like, mm-hmm. everybody's offering, like, above asking price trying to get houses right now. But um, the the woman who owns the house, a little old lady, she's like, yeah, no, go for it. Start a family. Have kids. Oh. <laughs> she accepted the offer and stuff like that. So we're trying to do as much as we can right now to get get moving on that. <laughs> okay, but I, I know I kind of asked this and kind of asked this about, like, what about Hercules? I mean, seriously, what about Hercules? Like, you know, cats don't adapt really well to moving. Yeah. Um, well, there's, there's two things about that one. Megan, like, for one, Megan has convinced me to get a second cat. <laughs> She's no. To get a second cat. <gasps> uh, well, her thing is also because we have to travel sometimes. It's better to have a second cat because then Hercules has someone there with him whenever mm. we leave, so he's not by himself. Because in most cases where it's like, oh yeah, we'll just you know, a uh, cat could be fine on his own. Uh, that's true if he's gotten used to also you know we leave for work every day. But since I'm a YouTuber, I'm at home all the time. And she's home all the time, and the cat always has somebody to be with. Yeah. Uh, so whenever there's nobody there, he starts to have like really bad social anxiety. Uh, social anxiety. He really has mm-hmm. separation anxiety, and um, so it's it's better for him to have another cat for him to kind of socialize with, even if we're not here. And it's like, oh, okay. So you're that's one a crazy thing. cat person. Yeah. Oh, Sorry. that's it. No, there's no more cats. <laughs> the second cat, that's it. <laughs> but um, that's one thing to help him adapt is that there will be another cat also. Uh, but another thing is like, we gotta move him. <laughs> there's, we don't really have a choice. He's gotta move. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna leave him here. Why not? Just buy, <laughs> buy the house for him. Yeah. Keep renting the house. Let the cat live there. <laughs> Just visit no. him every now and then. Yeah. Oh, God, that would be awful. <laughs> All right, I got to go Wait, check Hercules. I'll see you in doing? a couple hours. No. <laughs> would, I'm, I'm literally moving four hours away from the current house that we're in. That would be the worst to try to get, go back and forth over here multiple times a day. I already got to do that on Thursday. <laughs> see, what you do is you just put in a, uh, what, do, what do they put in for kids that, that are barely born? Uh, baby monitors. You just put a baby monitor. Yes, in the her, house. Yeah, just yeah. put it there, and like every time you hear even reality, you're like was that a was that a distress meow? Should I go over there? You know they do <laughs> sell those for cats, right? What? Um, yeah, I think yeah. you can get like cameras too. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Like there was one I remember seeing. I think it was over at Brookstone or something. It's like a little camera box that you can see with your cat. You can check on your cat via your phone, and uh, you can if you tap on like the picture, it shines a laser pointer there. Oh right, I've seen this. Yeah, isn't there a version where it also gives them a treat? So was that just for dogs? I I think that's a dog one, but still, that's wild, you know. Yeah. yeah. You now speaking of cats, I I forgot to tell you guys this in general, but um, fucking every morning I wake up come, when I come outside to go to the car, it's just those those kitties and their mom just walking around on my, on my lawn. I'm just like, oh. go home. <laughs> also, why are you awake? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> they love you though, Jen. They, they run away every time. They love you though, Jay. No, no cats in the house. Why must you be so violent with them? I have dogs. Wow. Too and many dogs stuff. and turtles, with both of which do not get along. <laughs> I've heard Blue, stories about, about people your... fucking biting, or cats biting turtles' faces off, so that's not going to be a thing. Wait, what? I've heard stories. <laughs> All right, so remember when, um, remember when we, I told you that a power line went down in the backyard? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. one, one of the police officers sticked around for a little bit and was telling us uh, some of his like stories because he saw our turtles. So he's like, oh, I used to own a turtle. But uh, one day when he was out bit- sunbathing, a cat just came up and bit him. Wow. Oh. What a joke. Yeah, fuck cats. Wow. Okay, look, let's not go that far. Fuck cats. <laughs> wow. <laughs> look, look. Fuck cats, right? We're having... No. Yeah, I like dogs this is more. Th- We're having a fight. Blue, how's your <laughs> yeah. week been? How's oh. your week been, Blue? You been, you been having a good, good week? I've been doing good, man. Um, my stuff is mainly nerd based. 
So God? that's pretty good. I, I want to know Mer I want to know nerd stuff. Uh, well, Stormblood comes out the Final Fantasy fourteen expansion next week. Ah, yeah, it does. And this little group owns a free company, which is basically the guild system in fourteen. So there's been like a lot of managing that. So we have stuff supplied and ready to go. Yeah. yeah so there's that. And you just need, oh, we just need money. You need money so much. So are we ready to move to the new uh, to the new location in the expansion yet? Or are we? Uh, pretty much. This we're getting close to the amount, but it's pretty manageable at this point. I I really need to get back into uh, to playing fourteen with you guys. Yeah, yeah. Man. I've been doing. I've been distracted. I haven't been on yet, but I will. You gotta. Friday, oh, next Friday is the day. Yeah, you have to and go then, hardcore with us. Yeah. By hardcore with yeah. us, I mean them. Oh, that's I right. Yeah. I won't be here. Um, oh my god. The, now's gonna be your chance, Blue. You can finally surpass him and get all uh, all the classes up to 60 before Jen can. The problem is, I don't like half the classes. I don't, yeah. I don't enjoy playing melee DPS. Really? Melee's so yeah. fun. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I actually enjoy playing my melee DPS a little bit more than I do as my black mage. However, uh, my black mage is me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're a loser in both worlds. Wow. Oh, fuck. Excuse yeah. me. Excuse me. Yeah. Absolutely did that. decimated. The, the black mage is the best, okay? Yeah, but I thought you were going to go red mage and or samurai. I was going to go red. I mean, I am going to go red mage because I already am a red mage. I just have black mage powers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, but I'm not going to go red mage as soon as it comes out. I, yeah, have, to, no. I have to go. Um, I have to do samurai, man. You and me are supposed to be samurai, but then you had to go and be an adult. Yeah. No, I fuck that. I'll still do samurai. Yeah. After yeah. I level my main to six seventy. Yeah. No, no, I feel you. I'm gonna do the same thing with black mage. I'm gonna go up to seventy. Yeah, just so we can but, get that XP bonus. Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> but at the same time, samurai. Dude, a samurai. Also, <laughs> also, uh, all the battle things are changing. So me and you, Spike, aren't gonna know shit. Yeah. Everyone's really? gonna have to learn new systems. Oh Is my it a god! Brand new system. So, I saw like I saw some of the updates. So Black Mage gets some of the some of the least amount of stuff, but the best stuff for Black Mage. Mm -hmm. So like oh, Black Mage understand. is okay. So I noticed the the teleporting thing. Yeah. So Black Mage gets one one of the abilities Black Mage gets is an ability to teleport to their ley lines, which is something they all want to do. Like always run back to your ley lines, stay at your ley lines, home bases their ley lines. <laughs> Uh, so they get that, and then they get something called triple cast, which lets them cast three things in a row, like if they, if they were using swift casts. That's awesome. So you just use yep. fucking uh, flare three times in a row. Oh, sh whoa. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. no. So, um, what else did they get? They, they get, um, well, they're, they're changing how uh, cross skills work, too. And one of the abilities that uh, casters are going to get for cross skill is uh, there's, there's going to be drain, and there's going to be something that I don't remember its name of, which is essentially you give some of your MP to another class. Mm -hmm. So, everybody figures Black Mage, MP Whore for, for now on. Yeah. <laughs> because Black Mage say, gets like... the MP the fastest. Yep, it's pretty much got unlimited. Yep. I was going to say that uh, that means that I will never give any of my MP away because I need it to cast. <laughs> barely. You say barely? Yeah, barely. See, you don't uh -huh. need... All right. How... Spike, do you remember how I taught you to play backlink? Blizzard 3 yes. and Flare. Blizzard 3 and Flare. Yeah. <laughs> Be trash. I'm talk. never doing that. Stop playing and go hug gl Grandma during the dungeon, too. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, you used that excuse when we were in the dungeon, right? <laughs> <laughs> there, there was some time at night where we were playing and Spike just said, I'm going to EFK, I'll be back. And then he came back and said that in text chat. And just, <laughs> they don't know if you're not serious or not. <laughs> for context, we had some random person have to go AFK for a while because they had to go hug grandma. That was, and it came that's... out of nowhere without context or anything. Yeah, like, I, I don't... <laughs> oh, just going to hug grandma, huh? Yeah. Grandma getting lonely? <laughs> It was like that time when I was playing a white mage with you, Jen, and I was like fucking around, and I ended up letting oh, like, yeah. the tank and the whole team wife, and like mind everybody oh, yeah. listening, I'm fucking 29 years old living with my wife, so like to just make up an excuse, I was like, sorry, my mom called me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, we were we were in um Tamterra, like which is the first fucking dungeon. <laughs> Or the second, second dungeon. Second dungeon. <laughs> the, and, the easiest fucking dungeon in the game. And and you know those fucking those little those guys with the scythes that you fight every now and then? Fucking Spike goes and gets everybody killed. He's like, huh, I wonder how long I cannot heal for. And then the big AoE comes out, I was like, uh, if he gets hit by that, you're, he's gonna die. and he died. The tank died. The tank died <laughs> and went to, it went to the other DPS, killed him. I was still alive, but fucking everybody else was dead. 
<laughs> so <laughs> the only people that mattered <laughs> that were dead. Nice. Good job, Spike. Oh, yeah, I'm the best healer, man. We should use me from now on. I'm great at heal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the, that's the plan. We're gonna. I'm gonna level a healer while Spike levels a samurai, and he's gonna level a healer while I level a samurai. I think that's what I said. <laughs> you just, you just I, lost track of what you were talking about. Yeah. I'm gonna level a healer while Spike levels samurai, and he's gonna level his healer when I level samurai. Bingo. There you go. And then uh, we're also gonna uh, probably maybe do some videos on my first impressions on the dungeon since I will I will have done the dungeons way after everyone else. So it's gonna be that. So that's a good thing to look forward to. By the way, yep. I know we went to the weeks and everything. Spike, you never actually told us what you could take from the future. Oh, yeah. dude, a robot. What kind of robot? You know what kind of <laughs> Yeah, the robot that's from uh, the Jetsons. Yeah, yeah the dude, one the queens? The robot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cleans up all from... things. Oh. Dude, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if that's what your taste lie. No, dude. Yeah, every uh, you've seen the, those updates, right? Uh, one of the recent one of the recent things in the news is that uh, they they've invented a robot that can uh, <clears throat> do that. Okay. I don't doubt they have. There's a market. No, for I mean, that. I mean, it's just like, it's, it's that like, robot in particular from the Justin is is not attractive. Dude, Rosie was hot. Those hot angles. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Are you corners. into grandmas? Dude, like, okay, well, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying, okay? Mm -hmm. Hard corners are the sexiest thing that can ever come onto, on, get the sexiest thing on a woman. That's proof of that when everybody fell in love with Laura Croft back in the day. She you know, you know it. <laughs> yeah. Everybody looking for that cheat code to, to make, uh, to make the, the clothes of Like, that, that the rumor spread like that. crazy. So many rumors that were just stupid. Yep. Stupid. What, what's the news in gaming, though, uh, uh, Jen? Is there anything going on besides sex robots? Yeah, tons of things. Um, first of all, Indivisible, the game that uh, from the creators of Skullgirls, the RPG that they're coming out, has been announced that it's going to be on the Switch. And I switched my physical copy to get a Switch one. So I'm going to get a digital one and a Switch one. So uh, probably give it one of the Switch, the, uh, the digital one to one of you guys and play the Switch one. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be fucking Skull. awesome. You guys haven't checked out Indivisible at all, huh? I was gonna say I I haven't even checked out Skullgirls. Oh come on, we should we should play Skullgirls. You say that all the time. <laughs> I'm not. I can't do fighting games, man. Dude, fighting games. But how are we supposed to play Tekken have... Seven next week? There, it, wait, it's was it next out, week? Man. Yeah, I mean, it's already out. Yeah, but I don't play. I was in an arcade week. this. I was in an arcade this last weekend. They had the. They actually had the Japanese candy cab of it. What? Yeah, they had a cab. I said Tekken Seven. You, you could play. Uh, like two, uh, one, one on one, like, and they were they were back to back, so you could play one on either side of the cab. Oh, that's oh, sick! That's one a, of those. It's a traditional can, uh, 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 arcade cab. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. The one of the trip to the Japanese ones. They're, they're really cool, dude. I, but I've yet to ever play it. I know you guys. Uh, when you and Matt were talking about Tekken Seven, you were saying that oh, it was really unfortunate that a bunch of characters ended up getting cut out. But I, I honestly, I, I never got into Tekken. Dude, Tekken has like deep lore, but like. Some of it's nonsense. Apparently, also, kind of spoilers, because uh, this is news we got from Creeps. Um, he said, like, apparently people are super disappointed in <laughs> uh, Tekken 7's uh, story mode. Like, they went oh, a really? little off the walls with uh, the funny rather than serious. I I've also heard the opposite of it has really, really good moments. Really? Yeah. I, I, you yep. know what? We're going to have to check it out for ourselves, then. Yeah, I was gonna say mm -hmm. you gotta play it for yourself and figure it out. Yeah, that's yeah. that's um that's interesting. I I whenever I think of fighting games with a story mode, the only ones I can really come to mind are like Injustice, where those are the games that I I absolutely love playing just for the sake of the story. Yeah, that you know Mortal Kombat has that too. Oh, Mortal more Kombat's the same fucking team. Mortal Kombat's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Like oh god, like uh, what was the la not the last Mortal Kombat game, but the one before that? It's fucking amazing. It was ridiculous. Sub Zero is fucking dumb. Yep. He's always fucking dumb. I don't know why. Wait, what? Sub Zero. He's fucking. Sub Zero sucks. Like, for real. Whoa. Oh, oh, what? Whoa. Sub Zero's a, a loser. Excuse me. Is this happening? All right. Look, Sub Zero's a loser. Scorpion is trash at his job. Like, his job is to, like, kill the, the whatever family, but he fucking is garbage at it all the time. Every instance he's trying to do it, he gets sent to hell, or he gets beat, or he gets locked into a mortal duel, or some bullshit like that, and it's just, come on, so, come on, Scorpion, get your shit together. 
Okay, you, 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 and me do not understand. Uh, we, we, we do not understand each other when it comes down to Mortal Kombat, man. Then what? Then what characters do you like in Mortal Kombat? Yeah, seriously. Okay, so Besides Johnny Cage. Damn it! All right, so <laughs> <laughs> there's Johnny Cage, and then there's um, there's Cyrex, uh, Noob Cybot, uh, Noob Cybot is. Oh no, they weren't the same people at the same time. Oh. Uh, there's Reptile. Uh, uh, there's what's the other robot? Uh, there's Cyrax and Sector. Sector and Cyrax are fucking cool, though they changed a lot. They're like, what you're talking about? <laughs> well, why the fuck are you asking what cool Mortal Kombat characters are? Because I'm talking about Mortal Kombat characters that I know about. You know anything in the first game? Jax. Jax is cool. That was in the first game. I think it was. was. Second, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the second game. Was Sonya Blade in the first one? Yeah. Yes. Okay, then. <laughs> but, but she's not on your list? <laughs> no. <laughs> she's, not, <laughs> she's not that interesting. <laughs> yeah. uh, Garo. Garo is cool. Yes, he was. Whatever that, agree with that. Whatever that centaur one that you fight in the fucking tower climb is cool. I don't, I don't remember know. the name of that one. Yeah, I don't know, remember. He's a bullshit centaur one where you have to fight him and he's unfair. Mm-hmm. He just charges I, through you. Which I, I think, don't honestly remember that at all. He's like the, he's he's supposed to be stronger than Goro or some shit like that. Huh. Yeah. Like, let's go back right. and play. Let's, we'll go, no, wait. We'll go back and play fucking Mortal Kombat. Don't worry. Do okay, it. cool. We're just going to play through the story mode of one. Yeah, then we'll just you know what, we'll just play through the story mode of all of them. Just they're not that long. I'm pretty yeah. sure they didn't have a story mode in most of them, did they? Uh, yeah, they did. Of. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they Luke Can became a zombie. Yeah, remember that? Wait, what? Yeah. You don't remember Luke that? Luke Can, zombie. Dude, that's like a that's like a major plot point in the more recent ones too. Yep. He was a zombie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you say zombie, do you actually mean zombie or do you mean yes. like zombie? That's like his... he died. That's like no, the I... little title. Zombie. Yes. Yeah. Zombie. Huh. Luke Can. I need to fucking catch up on my lore because apparently shit went crazy that I don't know about. It did. Well, Everything the new games crazy. kind of restart it. Yeah. Really? Also, the yeah. new games kill off a lot of characters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a lot of important characters. Mm. It's because they want to make the, the new bad people be like, we're fucking badass and we're also strong as shit. And it's like, mm, mm -hmm. cool. I mean, that's cool, but at the same time, you're not as recognizable as the other ones. Yeah. So, uh, but anyways, speaking of recognizable, uh, did you guys see that the uh, Vietnamese skincare company hijacked the Resident Evil umbrella logo? I did. I saw that that there was a, a post about that. I mean, I, I don't know of any company that would honestly want to associate themselves with the Resident Evil Dude, <laughs> umbrella company. But That's uh, how you get started. They, if you read the story, it goes on to say that they hired a company and yeah, that was what third, they got. A third company and they had no idea what it was. <laughs> like, oh. fucking... Not their fault, but they took it anyways. They didn't. Really, it's weird. You figure like the big, the big people on top would be like, "All right, I'm gonna verify this logo is legit and make sure it's not already used for something." But it I guess not. Like it was a small place. I was gonna say, so they they paid money to a company to give them that logo. Yes. Yeah. And they that's what they turned over was something from a really a video game, yes. and it's super recognizable. So, huh? GG. Well played. <laughs> Easy money. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how many. Like, I wonder how it came to be noticed, you know? Like, who's who's out there being like, look at this shit. I bet it was someone on NeoGAF. It always oh, ends up boy. being someone on NeoGAF. They know everything. It's a good bet. Uh, also, in more video game news, did you guys see that uh, gaming companies are adapting the Netflix business model with uh, no. Xbox Game Pass and the Switch Online Classic Game Services? Oh, yeah, I saw the one about the Switch. I didn't know there was an Xbox version of that. Yeah, the uh, Xbox actually has a bigger number of games right now because it they're just giving a bunch of old Xbox games like uh, Halo Wars, um, uh, God of War, I think. A, bu a bunch of stuff. You have to actually look into it. But um, Gears yeah, they're like, like probably. Gears of War is definitely one of them. Oh. Um, yeah, so they're like, here's a subscription service. These are the games you get. Go for it. Like, it's not uh, streaming them either. You download them. You can download them. You can play them as long as your subscription is valid. Well, I think it's about time they did that because eventually it's going to get to the point where people would just rather emulate them so to have a way to do that officially and it gives them money and gives the consumer exactly what they want yeah, yeah. like honestly especially with nintendo it's like nintendo has a bunch of classic games that people just want to get have like put these on there and we'll fucking buy them i hear that a lot like nintendo just give me the fucking game i'll buy it yeah. again i'll do it yeah and well, it's like, i was gonna say wasn't that the uh the whole idea behind the what was it the uh, NES classic the the console that they put out was that yeah we're gonna get let you buy it but then they just didn't produce nearly enough of them well the thing is it wasn't supposed to be like a official kind of product it was supposed to be something that they were getting ready to show for the switch you know 
Mm-hmm. Like, they want you to get pumped up for games and stuff like for Nintendo, but they didn't have anything coming out at the time. So, the Nintendo Classic was brought into the mind. Hmm, I see. And it's also, like, getting close to, like, holiday stuff, so... Yeah. They wanted to get, they wanted to get something out. Can't just not and get it, nothing out. And okay. then it turned into a mess. <laughs> to be fair, it's, it, they didn't predict what would happen, but at the same time, like, it's really weird that they didn't produce more. Yeah, just cutting it off entirely, just inflate the prices to ridiculous points. Well, at the same time, you can see that with the Switch Classic Game Services, it makes sense because that's exactly what they're offering, except it's mm. just a subscription thing. And in fact, it'll be adding more games to their library, as they say. Because it's definitely not the final list that they uh, shown, which is only three yeah. games at the moment. They're also getting some online features, right? Yes. Oh, by the way, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this at all, but uh, Splatoon has like a voice chat thing. That you oh have to connect God. the switch to the phone and then connect it to headphone. Yeah, it's stupid. Wait, what? Thing. You have to connect your switch to a phone and then connect the phone to headphone. Yeah. Why? What? To be able to talk on your switch. So the message is get Discord. Basically. Get Discord. Don't listen to the people talking on switch because it's going to be a bunch of like six year olds yelling. Six year olds like every- don't have cell phones, do they? Oh, you'll God, be yes, surprised, they do. Blue. Okay, Man, so remember that past. whole thing I mentioned before about having kids in the future? This is actually a discussion that me and Megan have had about, like, at what age do they get phones? At what age do they get computers and things like that? Mm-hmm. Because apparently it's considered to be a necessity when they uh, a necessity for a child to have a phone when they uh, as soon as they begin grade school. Jeez. Fuck you. Not just to mention that, but also the... I mean, also, you're looking at the fact that kids have tablets... When they're just learning, learning anything, it's like it's a learning tool. So you mm-hmm. end up having tablets all the time, unrelated to like um, just for like, oh, I'm going to use this to check my email. No, it's it's used to like I'm going to learn to read and stuff like that. One of my friends, her, sh- her she had her kids, and I actually bought him a tablet for Christmas because it's like, yeah, um, this is good for him to be able to to learn reading skills and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I was going to buy him games and stuff, and she's like, please, he's not old enough yet. Just let him play demos; he'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I see that all the time. I see kids running around with their their father's tablet or whatever, what what have you, and it's just like I'm just, I I I wouldn't be the parent like that to do that because all I can think is they're gonna break it, 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 they're gonna yep. break it, they're gonna break it. Dude, see, there's actually there are phone cases for children. I, I've, I've seen them. They're giant and blocky, but like most of the time, they're big, it's, they're big sponges, man. The most of the times I see is that not so much them getting their own thing. That's like it has nothing on it. It's most of the time I see. Them giving their tablet to the kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just like putting the app that they installed on there for them, you know? Yeah. It's just like, I, it's, I mean, it's, it's a dangerous. cheaper option, but it's probably more convenient to I have don't their even own trust, thing that you can limit. I don't even trust adults near my technology. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking it's different when it's your kid, man. Kid's gonna live outside and learn how to build something I never did. I was like, did you, did you do this? <laughs> Playing the dirt. Play, uh, play in the rain. Yeah. Learn how to survive. And did you? Okay. Let's be honest with ourselves here. And this is for all of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you guys, uh, how often did you actually go outside and play when you were kids? Tons. All the time. Yeah. Honestly. Did you really? As a kid? Yes. Now? Not fucking at all. Outside. <laughs> outside. The outside's dead to me. I mean, what? sometimes just... It was definitely more than currently, but yeah, it was like out of babysitters. So I'm not sure if it counts because that was sort of mandated. See, like that, that was a, a thing. Gym? I, hmm? I said we had a jungle gym. Mm. This is the slide and bars, and you f- fell onto the slide and cracked your back and you lose your memory. Mm. Oh my god, what? I never tell you guys about that. No, there was a time where I was playing at night where um, I guess like I fell backwards and hit hit the middle the middle edge of the slide and just. That's all I remember that night. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. I know, um, June Winter one year, I, uh, I fell fucking flat back on a mountain of basically ice and smashed my head. <laughs> yeah. I had to go to the doctor for that one. Oh god. Canada's it was all dangerous. fine, it's just, I need to take it easy. Oh man, that's... <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? The outside's dangerous! <laughs> Yeah. Fuck that side. Me. Further solidifying my the fact that I never went above the eye with a shovel once too. Me too. I have a scar yeah. still. Yeah. Did, did what? My, uh, my brother hit me above the eye, in, like the uh, eye socket area, with like a shovel. 
Oh, well, I guess it would be under the eyebrow. That's a better way of putting it. This is why I'm glad I don't have siblings. siblings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got hit in the eye by a nephew who's older than me because my brothers are older than me. Um, mm-hmm. uh, they were turning around with a shovel and I was behind them. They hit me in the, straight in the eyebrow and knocked me on the floor. And I have the, the scar underneath the eyebrow, so you can't see it that well. Yeah. So, I got that going. Oh, see, like, I, I, I don't have siblings, so I'm, I'm kind of happy about this. The only thing that I've had is, uh, I, well, I know about uh, Megan when she was a kid. Her, her sister, uh, her and her sister were looking up at a tree uh, where they saw a spider in the tree. And so her sister is like, I'll take care of it. And she gets the tennis racket and she jumps up in the air and squashes at the spider. And of course, misses because she's short. And she like pegs Megan right in the face with the tennis racket, leaves that waffle print on her forehead. It's all making I'm sorry, but. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, it's like if you want to, you want to get, you want to join the shovel club, you know. Yeah. I, sho- I don't. I own I'm, a shovel. I'm, I am out of the shovel club because I don't want to be there. <laughs> I own multiple shovels. Yeah, join the club, man. I am, I'm good. Pure I don't pressure. need to. Pure, pure pressure. <laughs> pure One pressure. of us. Dun, 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 dun. Under pressure. Um, I'm no. Down. I'm, in down. I'm okay. cool, my man. <laughs> I'm uh, cool. Not that. Oh wait, there's something terrible I still have to talk about. Mm-hmm. What's that? Uh, so Hungry Box, a pro Smash player who I kind of despise because he's like kind of garbage. Where he's kind of a piece of shit when he comes to uh, being a good sport. He's mm. just all about the win, even yeah. if it makes him look like an asshole. Like really? Uh, like an, maybe the Evo ago, he lamed it out. He fucking lamed it out hardcore, and it was like. The shittiest win ever. And he's just like, yeah. Why the fuck did you come here? Why, 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 why? I thought you were supposed to be the pro. Naming it out, really? Fucking get some. So he won something called the Smash and Splash tournament recently, and his victory speech pretty much said, "I'm gonna call out this little big company, you know the one." Instead of saying Nintendo, because he fucking talking about Nintendo saying, uh, "Uh, Smash isn't just a game; it's a lifestyle." And he's just like. You gotta, you gotta support us now, or something like that. So, and he's like, like, dude, dude, like, fucking come on. Yeah. <laughs> Nintendo is not the one to expect that sort of support from. Yeah, like, I, I didn't watch this fight because, fi- frankly, I don't give a shit about Hungry, Hungry Box. Uh, yeah. But I can only guess that it ended up in the same way. He, he's a Jigglypuff player, which just makes me sad because, like, Jigglypuff's a fucking great character to play just because it's fun. Which is mm. what it, Smash is. It's a party game for fun. Oh, shit. Oh, dude, you're getting ahead of yourself now. You're talking about fun. This isn't about fun. <laughs> this is about competitions and winning. Yes, this that is money. This is live or die. You know, collusion, winning, smashing players. You know, Jeez. only there's only four sm- good Smash players in the world, you know. And all of them mm. all use the same controller and they can't fucking have that controller anymore because this, the fucking market's running out of that, that defect. Yeah, there's like a ten percent chance of a controller that's usable having this defect that makes it possible to be a top Smash player. Yep. Wait, what? Yeah. I don't. I'm not. I'm not into the Smash scene. I don't know anything about this. But that's the first time I've ever heard anything about that. What is that? What is that? What? So it's it's a it's a defect that pretty much allows your analog. It's like a it it it's a, it's a cheat. It's a cheat that makes you better. It's. It just allows a certain number of inputs that a normal controller cannot, uh, cannot reach. I see. But it's not against the rules because it's an official part of the game. Yeah, it's an official product licensed by Nintendo when actually put out by Nintendo. It's just some controllers have it, some controllers don't. Mm. It's just like, it's it's as if you were using turbo with a controller, but you don't have the turbo on the controller, you know? That sounds stupid, honestly. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, I'm not, I'm no, I'm no expert on Smash, okay, and nobody ever take me to be one. However, that sounds like insanity. <laughs> that yeah. there's a, uh, there's a allowed cheat that allows you to. Uh, it's dumb. The, the, the it's not tournament legal. Cheat Don't get me wrong. Game. I love Smash. I love watching Smash tournaments, and I love all that shit. It's just fucking people like Hungrybox piss me off. Like they, they, they're the reason people don't like Smash players. Yeah. Some people just don't like Smash. You were asking me before why I don't like like fighting games. I, I can't get into fighting games purely because there is always going to be that one guy who um, that one guy who does nothing but play that game. You know, mm-hmm. this is this is the same problem. We, last time we talked about Dead by Daylight, this is the same problem I had with Dead by Daylight. Is that you know you're always going to be up against that one guy 
who does nothing but play this game. And I mean, I, I got Street Fighter Five levels it out, Street and Fighter then you Fighter. try to get into a random game. It's but, like, uh, oh, them, they have all the levels. You can't do anything anymore. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's like Street Fighter Five. Like, I can't play online because I know I'm gonna. As soon as I start playing online, it's just a game of me getting wrecked. Yeah, yep. you know what I'm saying? I and feel like, that. I mean, uh, there's the whole thing about get good because I'm just bad at the game, which is totally true. I'm bad at the game, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like, you know, how do I how do I find fun out of this? It's like, not. How am I, how am I supposed to? You know, there's like. Not to say people like us, but people like us where it's a lot of online is where we get our playtime because like there's not a lot of people to just call over and be like, hey, you want to sit down at my computer and play a fucking with, the, with two controllers? Mm -hmm. Like Couch Cop's kind of dead. I hate to say it, but like it is. So it's not oh. really not really an option for us to be like, hey, I'll just play against my friends. But like I want to play online. I want to play with my friends online, too. Just want to crack play like if I can even if on hard sometimes like like smash you put the computers to hard they're not that hard they're, they're kind of like whatever they're, they're, they are they kind of get stupid mm -hmm. so it's like it's, you're not going to get better by fighting computers unfortunately it'll teach you a little little something but it won't you won't get much better than that yeah because yeah. people people are always far more intuitive than than the computers are yeah it's just like ah what am, what am I supposed to do just sit by myself and do nothing all day Yes. I'll just, I'll oh, just be in the, the training room. Or you do the thing that everyone says and get good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just go buy the controller that has a 3% malfunction. Like off. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? so does that work for all games? <laughs> Probably not. I don't I mean, think anyone plays games as much as they play Smash to find out. I'm not even sure if there's any other games on the GameCube that would allow that. I guess, Maybe uh, some sort of Zelda thing. For speed yeah. ones. There's Soul Calibur, but I can't imagine Soul Calibur needing something with precise inputs. Well, is yeah. that a... Wait, but you said it's a Nintendo-created controller, so I imagine it's a controller that, that is created for... I don't know it, so... It's, it's a GameCube. I'm, it's a GameCube controller. Yeah, it's, it's just like that, a normal it's just, controller. Like, some just controllers just have a fucking malfunction. Okay, fair, oh, fair enough. So, like, the... But, like, I guess, I guess the real thing is that there's not many competitive games on the Wii. Like, super competitive GameCube. games. We're well, talking about Melee. We're talking about Melee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Super Smash Brothers made that. Uh, so the only yeah. game that anybody continues to play on the GameCube. What? Hey, they might play Double Dash. Dude, Double Dash, Resident Evil, Super Mario Sunshine, Wind Waker, uh, Kirby Air Ride. Kirby Air Ride. Two Kirby's of those have already been remade for other consoles to be able to play. Kirby Echo Yarn. Eternal Monkey Darkness. Out. Eternal Dark. Oh, fucking Eternal Darkness is awesome. You yeah. Serious? Have you never played Eternal Darkness? No. Wow. Oh, we should play Eternal Darkness. I've heard a lot of I've heard a lot about it. Okay, I've heard a lot about the um, uh, the game, but I have yet to actually play it myself. And I've I've also heard that this is one of those things that uh, that many people are like, oh, you've got you got to try it out. You got to try it out because it's such a good game. Mm -hmm. You should play it. Also, Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Doors on the GameCube. Yeah, but nobody plays Paper Mario. Yeah, no one plays that. Yeah, dude. Excluding the part where Jen and I are like in chapter what six or seven. Yeah, we're almost <laughs> done with the game. <laughs> Wait, on, uh, are you guys playing Thousand Year Door? Yeah, because yeah. Blue's, Blue's played the first Paper Mario, so she doesn't have any catching up to do. Uh, oh, but I haven't too. played a Thousand Year Door. Yeah. So so we're going through this for the first time, and man, I do remember Paper Mario Thousand Year Door pretty well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh, no. man, it's pretty good. And I'm garbage at doing time pets. The, honestly, same. It, yeah. I don't know when the fuck you're supposed to do anything in that game. Yeah, mm. uh, in the first Paper Mario, uh, me and Cre uh, Spike, Matt, Spike played it. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Sweat Creep Snat played it play the what first. The fuck? <laughs> we played the first uh, Paper Mario, and um, Spike got wasn't really very good at the times hits or action buttons or guarding or walking around the overworld map. Look, okay, you don't have to do those things. All I gotta do is grind until I'm good at them naturally. <laughs> but we should go back to that. You've only made it two chapters in. You're only, you're only at, you're only at dry, dry desert. Fucking a really good chapter is right after that too. Yeah. Like you say nice. only, but I mean, I've already made it majority of the way through the game. If I don't play it at all, <laughs> you're basically done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but um, in other is, news, just not play. <laughs> in other news, news um, uh, there was a Pokemon direct today that I didn't catch, okay. but uh, there was news that came out, and I saw it, and it's not that interesting. But I mean, Wait, I what happened? It. No, Blue, Blue, you were talking about the Pokemon Direct. What is what is up with the new Pokemon? Um, Basically, they announced a... It sounds like a port with a few new characters for of Pokemon Tournament for the Switch. 
Oh, and okay. then they announced um, Pokemon Sun and Moon Ultra, I believe it was. Which yes, is, that's... It's Pokemon Sun and Moon in like an alternate reality with a new story. So, Wait, the bla- oh, it's so what they're doing is like Pokemon Sun and Moon. Yeah, Black and White 1 and 2 is essentially what they've done. It, yes. it sounds like it, but there might I'm be honestly... claims of new Pokemon, but I'm Ooh. not willing to like say that. 100% since not too much has been announced. That. <laughs> and then they ended the direct with saying they are launching Pokemon Silver and Gold on Virtual Counter for the 3DS. Wait, what? They're they're launching it for on what? <laughs> no. Downloadable for the 3DS. The original Gold and Silver. Oh, the original. The original, yeah. not the not the remakes. The originals. Yeah. See, the thing is, uh, the uh, the remakes they did of that was actually my favorite Pokemon game. Yeah, they were really good. I never played any were, of the silver mm. ones. It's, oh, it's so good. The but, gold and silver were the the, in my opinion, the best. Yeah. That they've ever done. You should play that one day. You, you really should. You yeah, have the time. The uh, the thing was that like they always give you like uh, one region to kind of explore with stories and such to go along with it. But in Gold and Silver, you actually got to go back and see what how other areas had developed since the last time you were there. They're, they're people that you beat you can go back and beat them again or you could just talk to them hang out with them stuff like that things that are just you don't normally think like oh hey um after i've beaten a after i've beaten a gym leader they're done they've done all that they care to do they're dead in this world yeah no in that one you can just go back and reach out or you can there's a way you can rechallenge every gym leader sometimes you have to do like little side quests but it's really good also it had the nice feature of your pokemon could walk with you oh that's what that one's from mm-hmm. yeah I was actually kind of sad they took that out of games later on. Yeah, it seemed like such a missing feature from Black and White, but it was clear that it was under development by maybe different teams even. Uh, Who knows, I can't say. I feel like I miss out on a lot of Pokemon since I've only played uh, the original Red, the remake of Red, uh, and then Black and White and then Sun and Moon. Yeah. So I feel like I, I, I missed a lot. I missed, what, uh, Diamond it, Pearl, uh, Silver, Gold, uh, Black White 2, Ruby. Sapphire Ruby... Um, uh, platinum and whatever. Uh, there's a lot of them I just completely missed Did out you say on. Say diamond and pearl. And I have no interest in going back to just because it's Sun and Moon has like a lot of quality of life. Ah, I keep losing connection to you. No, <laughs> that's okay. We we're actually reaching a point where we we're almost out of time for this uh, for today's uh, for today's episode or this week's episode. Should I say? So mm-hmm. it's 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 not so bad. I can lose connection as long as I get a chance to say at least one more thing. And um, that's to thank everybody for listening to once again another episode of the Dungeon Runners podcast. And to be sure to follow the Dungeon Runners podcast on YouTube, on SoundCloud, and you can be able to watch each recording of the Dungeon Runners podcast live on twitch.tv slash Dungeon Runners podcast when we record live on Tuesdays. Also, if you guys are interested in sending us a hypothetical or anything of the like, please leave a comment on any one of the aforementioned websites. Yay. Thanks for listening, guys, and we'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye.